Hello and welcome to today's episode. Today I am here with Lauren Sachs and we're going to be talking about her book, Whole Mama Yoga. You are listening to Creating Wellness from Within, a podcast devoted to helping you live your best life through self-care and wellness. In each episode, we strive to offer you actionable advice and tools to help you on your journey towards greater personal wellness. I am your host, Amy Zellmer. I am editor-in-chief of Minnesota Yoga and Life magazine and the Brain Health magazine. I am also the author of the Chair Yoga Pocket Guide, and I'm passionate about yoga, wellness, photography, travel, and all things glittery. You can learn more about me at creatingwellnessfromwithin.com. Today, my guest is Lauren Sachs. And she is a perinatal and Hatha yoga instructor with over 20 years of teaching experience. She was a founding member of the Corboral Yoga Company in 2004 and taught thousands of students during her 15-year tenure. Practical alignment, whimsical humor, and fierce authenticity are hallmarks of Lauren's classes. One of her greatest joys is leading yoga and meditation retreats for parents and mothers. Lauren's expertise in perinatal yoga, as well as her beloved yoga for motherhood classes, makes her a sought-after presenter in yoga teacher training programs, and she works regularly with both UNC and Duke to teach tools of yoga to residents, obstetricians, midwives, and their patients. She loves reading, cooking, eating, quilting, and napping, and her family and friends in no particular order. She, loves in, she lives in Carborough, North Carolina with her husband and their two children. Welcome, Lauren. So happy to have you here. Thank you. I am happy to be here and to talk with you. Yeah. So first of all, congratulations on getting your book out there. I know it just recently came out. Um, I know what an undertaking a book can be. And you are co-author with Alexandra Desiato. Did I say that correctly? Alexandra Desiato. Mm -hmm. Very close. Great. Excellent work. Um, So, so thrilled to have you here. And, um, you know, talking about prenatal, postnatal, whole mama, right? Like your book says, the whole mama. The whole Um, mama. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So let's maybe start with, you know, what brought you to writing this book? Um, Clearly, you have years of experience, but what kind of led you down this path to um, creating Whole Mama? Well, Alexandra and I were both teaching yoga at the same studio. And about, we have, we both have daughters who um, are eight years old. And about seven years ago, when both of our children um, were young or infants, we were talking one day about um, just the, you know, I was teaching prenatal yoga, Alexandra was teaching postnatal yoga, and how there is such a community that comes about as a result of both of those types of classes, that yoga classes in general um, are often very internally focused uh, and about connecting to yourself and connecting to your breath and connecting just to the movement practice and how we loved that prenatal and postnatal yoga both offer that as well. But in addition to that, there is a bit more of a connective foundation to both of those classes. And so we wanted to broaden that. And so our original concept of whole mama yoga was to create a blog and then hopefully sort of more of an online community about um, yoga and the perinatal time. Um, but then it started to, you know, as things do sort of organically yeah. expand, right. And we are now offering workshops and classes, and we have a collective of other teachers and birth care professionals who work with us, um, to serve a really broad expanse of, time and people from those who are trying to get pregnant to those who are parenting adolescents and beyond. Um, And so we essentially decided that having 
at least some of that knowledge encapsulated in book form might be a good idea, both for us and hopefully to the the broader um, population out there. And so we came up with the idea for, for writing this book. And that's how that came about. That's wonderful. You know, I just, you know, sometimes there's just something about having a book and being able to hold it and look at it that just can have a different, it can just have a different reach, right? Mm -hmm. Than even in-person classes, online stuff. It just, there, what I have learned in all my work is that there are different learners, right? Mm -hmm. Some prefer audio, some prefer video, some prefer written words, some prefer oral words. So it's just, you know, just another way of reaching another audience. And exactly. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I know you wanted to touch on a little bit about, you know, postnatal and then going into motherhood and the experience of motherhood. And I think particularly, you know, first time moms, right? Um, before we started recording, I was sharing a story of my best friend from high school. She was the first of any of us to have a child. We were like mid 20, like maybe 25. And she had her baby and I went over to meet him. And she had just gotten out of the shower and she was like, I didn't know what to do. She's like, I didn't know what to do with the baby. I had to take a shower. And so he was in his car seat in the bathroom with her. And like, just those little things you don't even think about, you know, you're the first one to have a baby and she didn't have any siblings. She didn't have any cousins even, um, you know, to even emulate what you do <laughs> with a baby. Right. And so I just, I, you know, I thought that was a cute story. Um, it's always kind of stuck with me. Um, but, you know, often we have postnatal pre, sorry, prenatal yoga classes. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking one studio owner, I'm like, oh, do you offer postnatal? And she's like, no. And I'm like, is that a thing? Like, is that a word? Or did I just oh. make that up? And she's like, no, that's a thing. But no. <laughs> and it was like, well, what do you do after you have the baby? Right? Like that, that, and then that whole story of my friend came to mind, like she didn't know what to do. And so there's a lot of overwhelm after having, especially that first child, um, yes. po you know, the postpartum stuff and just everything, all the emotions and hormones. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a community that really, really needs, um, needs connection. It can feel mm -hmm. really isolating and really insular. And, and what is really true is that there are so many people going through similar experiences. There are so many people putting their kids in their car seats while they take a shower, you know, <laughs> both <laughs> metaphorically and, you know, really. <laughs> right. Um, and, um, and the learning curve is really steep, but it's also one that you're not alone on. And I think that, um, you know, it's easy enough for us in our small little um, community in North Carolina to reach a certain number of people through the work that we do. But then our, our intentions, our hopes with this book were that you could take little nuggets of uh, yoga practice and integrate them into daily life because as you also sort of mentioned in, in talking about the story of your friend, you know, that time is really precious and becomes this uh, prioritization of needs is really important in, especially in the first few months postnatally. And so you might not have the capacity or the time or the energy to go to an hour long yoga class, right? Or mm -hmm. Even to set aside that time for yourself in your own space. And so being able to uh, integrate yoga into your life with a newborn or with an infant or with a toddler is something that we think is a little bit more realistic when it's done in three minutes chunks or a mm -hmm. pranayama practice and then a 10 minute movement session later or you know while you're nursing you can do a short visualization or meditation 
and it doesn't become quite as intimidating or overwhelming that way. Um, because prenatally, what we've noticed is that we have people come into class. They're really excited. They love the community. We share experiences. We talk about, you know, no topic is really off limits in, in prenatal yoga as far as what the process of pregnancy is like. Um, and I think that really helps to, to, to tie people and connect people with one another, um, that they share this really intimate time. And then they all have really high hopes that once they've had their baby, they'll come back together and it will be the same group and we'll continue on as it was. And surprise, life gets a lot uh, more, yeah. control, you know, when you have, when you have a new baby. So it's, it's trickier to do postnatal yoga in the same way that you do prenatal yoga, but it's mm -hmm. definitely possible, you know, and, and then, and then once you get further on down the road of parenting, it's just as important to maintain some sense of self, some sense of connection to people in a similar situation and some connection to your body and your, you know, just soul as you are yeah. moving through. Yeah. 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 And you know, that it, it's interesting, the story you just shared of how you have a class and you know, I assume people are kind of do somewhat within a similar time frame, right? Mm -hmm. And, and then you, there's this expectation of like, oh, yay, we'll all come back together with our babies, you know, afterwards. And then that overwhelm hits, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've lost all sense of time and space when that baby comes. And yeah, like I can see where it's just so much harder. I mean, I'm sure it can happen. And, and some of those groups do continue like that, but it's just a lot harder. Um, and then being able to add in just a three minute chunk of yoga, right. To help with your mental health, to help with stress, just everything, um, you know, is so beautiful because I think, you know, we all know the concept, you know, pranayama, right. It's our direct access into, um, bringing us back into parasympathetic. Um, but we often don't practice what we preach, so to speak. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Like we know it, we know it's good for us. We know we should do it. We know we'd feel better, but we still just avoid it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's nice to have a number of different reminders. You know, you, I mean, I certainly need that. Mm -hmm. Um, from other people, from books, from, from podcasts, from classes. And, and, you know, you were mentioning earlier that people learn in different ways. And mm -hmm. I think people access um, their bodies and access kind of a calmer parasympathetic state, um, not necessarily in entirely different ways, but they find that, mm -hmm. uh, pranayama or that yoga or breath work or meditation, um, through different paths. And it's, it's good to have a lot of, a lot of options out there because for some people, they really need the in-person, the in-person space. And, um, and I think there are, you know, there are postnatal classes out there that are available and that are lovely and that really do a great job in, in providing that for those who can attend. Um, what we found actually during the pandemic, I mean, I know everyone had, you know, the kind of trauma of the pandemic as yeah. it existed. And then also often silver linings in different forms and formats. And what we noticed was that all of our classes went online and most of them have come offline now and are back in person, but we have maintained a thread of connection to the online zoom community through our postnatal classes, some of them at least, because people can do them from their home in their pajamas with their baby next to them. And they don't have to worry about their baby crying mm, or about having yes. to feed their baby or change their baby, you know? And so I'd certainly, you know, for any one listening, who's kind of wondering, how to either make it to a class or if you're a studio owner um, trying to 
integrate a postnatal class into, you know, your schedule, it is really lovely to have that option, either have a hybrid version or an online version, because there's just a, an access that it provides that is not mm. the same as having to get your foot in the door of a studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I'm so glad you brought this up. Like I, I mostly teach in the brain injury world. Um, I'm a brain injury survivor. And so I mostly work with other survivors mm -hmm. and all my, my classes are online. They're still online. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when COVID hit and we had, everybody had to scramble, like support groups went online, classes went online, trainings went online. And we were all like, why didn't we do this before? It's so much more accessible <laughs> to a community. Like I'm referring to brain injury. Some of these folks can't drive. Some of them have massive anxiety and can't do in-person things. Like going online was just like this ah, moment, right? Like, and it's like, what was keeping us from, from doing this before? So that truly is the silver lining of COVID, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think probably like if, if you had to, if you were on, what's that show, The Family Feud, and you had to pick like the top 10 <laughs> silver linings, that would yes. certainly be one of them. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be number one, accessibility. <laughs> Just like, dang, why didn't we think of doing online support groups? Like, you know, I mean, just, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah it's, it's been a really helpful realization for, for us and for, you know, yeah, for the people who need, who need to be mm -hmm. able to be at home and, and practice and also still want to connect with other people. Yeah. And not feel like they're yeah. Totally and a brand themselves. new mom, right? She, like, I know um, there's a studio here that offers um, bring your own baby classes. I think that's what it's called. BYOB, bring your own baby. And so it's for new moms. You can bring your baby with you to yoga. And it sounds fantastic, but I have to believe that there's some anxiety, guilt, whatever the word might be. Um, like if your baby starts crying or you need to start breastfeeding. And I know that they're very much like, you know, feel free to stop, go in the other room, do what you need to do. But there's still that level of just like anxiety, right? So being able to do this online, you're on mute, mm -hmm. <laughs> baby starts crying, no big deal. Nobody else hears it. You can go off camera, feed, change what, you know, whatever, and then come back. And it's just brilliant. <laughs> I yeah. can see a huge need for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really, it's really been great. And I don't see any reason to stop, you know, doing mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, and, and absolutely. The, the tools of, of access to what we do. So I absolutely mm -hmm. agree. And we were talking earlier about like, you know, how, you know, you need to do these things, you know, that you'll feel better if you do them. Um, I went to a yoga workshop when I was just a student many, many years ago. And I remember um, our teacher guiding us through like this journal thing and writing in our journal, 10 things that we really enjoy and that are easy and quick and when you're in that low vibration because it's hard to shift and get out of that low vibration right and if you're in that low vibration and you know you need to do something what are these 10 things that mm -hmm. resonate with you and you know it could be pranayama it, it, it could be going for a walk it could be taking a drink of water whatever um and I, that just always resonated with me because like, you know, someone might give you a list of 10 things, but if none of those things appeal to you when you're in that low vibration, you're not going to do them. So you need to have this list of things that you truly enjoy to try and bring you out of that low vibration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And, um, and yeah, and, and I think, you know, there is a lot of, focus to, especially, um, and, and this is not to say that there is anything wrong about the prenatal or postnatal books that I've read in the past. I think they are wonderful. I mean, I know of several that, that I can highly recommend and I'm happy to make a list of those. Um, but 
I do think that sometimes what is missing is the recognition that uh, an asana movement practice is not necessarily the only way to access, you know, getting into yeah. a state of calm. And mm -hmm. it may be that breath work is better for you or meditation or, you know, Alexandra is a huge fan of mantra and just repeating phrases yeah. in order yeah. to get yourself kind of into a calmer state visualization, you know? Um, and, and so we, we tried to also in a way that is accessible, make it apparent that those things are also, you know, ways to, to pathways to get in lists. Yeah. So, you know, having different tools that, that, you know, work for you um, and just, you know, kind of having that mental list, like, okay, I'm really crabby right now. or I'm, I'm feeling depressed right now. What can I do? Okay. I can take a drink of water. Mm -hmm. I can do tree pose for two minutes or, you know, whatever, whatever resonates with you. And it, it you know, it just, it really can be powerful. And like you said, it doesn't have to be asana. Mm -hmm. Asana is just one of the eight limbs. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think I feel pranayama. I mean, that's our direct access. Like you can't get any more direct into the vagus nerve and the autonomic system. Um, so that's always my go-to. And I just taught, or I didn't teach. I just, I had a little quick lecture at a chamber women's thing. And I had them do just, I think we did like five breaths. That was it. Like just a minute or two, like the collective energy of the room just shifted. Mm -hmm. um, and I always think that's so far, that's so powerful for people to experience who are not yogis and haven't done breath work. Yes. Yes, for sure. I mean, I hear, you know, I, I teach, I still, you know, I, I I'm, I'm, singing the praises of, of postnatal yoga, I still feel that that prenatal yoga is really important. And of course, yoga when you're parenting is really important. But one of the things that I hear so often from my prenatal yoga students after they've given birth is that mm, I know where you're going <laughs> is such and breath work is such yes. the kind of key to accessing calm and um, presence of mind when you're in labor, you know? And so I do this exercise with my students where we just chant the, the vowel sounds. And one of my yoga teachers uh, taught this to me several years ago. And again, like you said, the same thing I've, I've taught it um, to doulas, to midwives, you know, and, um, and the collective energy just is, it's, it's palpable how different it is. Yeah. We've done that, you know, easy three minute exercise. Um, and it also, in addition to kind of shifting the, the, the energy, it also relaxes the muscles of your pelvic floor and what could be more important <laughs> during childbirth and, um, and, and labor than, than that. So, uh, and that's that, you know, no one's doing downward facing dog while they're, <laughs> they might labor, be active labor. <laughs> right. As far as I'm aware. <laughs> I, I remember my friend, um, they had one of those balance balls, right. The big, the big ball. Um, and she was leaned over on it. Um, roll kind of rolling back and forth on it and she's like I didn't care that my naked ass was hanging out for the world to see at that moment <laughs> no and and you know in our society we are and especially as women I think we don't we we aren't taught from a young age to take up a whole lot of space and yes. that stinks <laughs> so or to make noise or to make noise. Right. Exactly. And so we have to, in order to prepare for a time when it's really, really helpful to make noise and to take mm -hmm. up with our bodies, we have to practice. And so yoga and pranayama and mantra and chanting 
give us the opportunity to practice and to be uncomfortable in that practice so that we can become comfortable with it and that it can become something that feels like a really natural tool as opposed to something that you're just sort of, you know, struggling to find any connection to. Um, So I, I encourage people to practice the vowel sound chanting or anything else doesn't have to be vowel sounds. It can be a word. It can be, you know, I had a woman, yeah. who, she just cursed throughout labor, but it was a hey, really whatever word, vowel curse, right? Yes. <laughs> Chant those curse words. Chant those curse words. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so it can be whatever it needs to be for you, but it, it, um, it helps to become more connected and, and, and comfortable with making noise and taking up space. Yeah. 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 I know um, at that same, uh, same chamber event, I had everybody, I taught them how to chant Ohm and the meaning of Ohm and all that. And um, I invited anyone who would like to participate to chant Ohm with me. And I prefaced that with folks in the Midwest don't like to make noise. Um, and, and they all giggled, right? And there's there's always that one person who sits back on their chair and crosses their arms and refuses to participate in it. And it's like, you're the one that could use it the most. So, yeah, it's we've just been taught not to make noise, not to take up space. Right, right. And all we can do, you know, as yoga instructors or, you know, mindfulness guides or, you know, whoever you might be listening is to extend, you know, the invitation. Yeah. Yep. what to see what happens and to let people have their own paths and journeys but yeah um when I did not like chanting in the beginning when I was a student I was resistant to I mean I did it but I didn't like it it made me uncomfortable (laughs) and I think that's when change happens right when when you're in the discomfort that's when change can happen yeah when you sit with it and you let it be there Mm -hmm. and then you do it again (laughs) And and now I love it now I love teaching it I love sharing it um yeah, growth, right? <laughs> yeah. And I will and I will share that, you know, during both so I have two children. I have a uh he recently minted 12-year-old and I have an 8-year-old. And um when I was in labor with my son, who is my older child, he um you know, I I had practiced yoga for a while and I had done um and I was very into music and very into like the meaning of lyrics and you know, and melody and all of that. And I, so I made several different playlists for my labor experience. And what I noticed was that what I ended up really listening to the entire time was Kirtan, which I did not anticipate at all, but the repetition of that and the, again, just the energy that was there was really, really helpful. And I think that, you know, there is, um, there is certainly evidence for, um, there being a lot of, I'm blanking on her name right now. I need to find it and I will, but the, the need for, um, rhythm repetition and relaxation are, are all kind of the three integral components to, um, a successful and empowered birth experience. And I don't mean Mm. that in the like, you must have a natural birth with all fairy lights and, you know, water right. and, you know, only yourself and, you know, the angels around you or whatever it may be. But I do mean that you feel like you're present in your body and that you are in a state where you're able to mindfully make decisions that support your your best interest and your child's best interest. and. Yeah. So having relaxation, rhythm, ritual are all really, um, really key to that. Penny Simkin is the woman's name. <laughs> done. I um, love how our brains work sometimes. <laughs> I know, it just came in. So yes, she's a very renowned um, physical therapist, doula. Um, she actually founded Dona. So she is quite um, experienced in all of, all of uh, she's been to thousands of births. So uh, if, if you don't listen to me, certainly take a listen to, to Penny and, and she can guide you on that, that journey. 
Well, Lauren, this has been such a lovely conversation. Um, we're just about out of time. So I want to make sure we take a moment to um, just mention your website, your book, what people can find on your website. Um, so they can go to wholemamayoga.com. And wherever you're listening, I have a clickable, clickable link in the show notes. So go click through um, Whole Mama Yoga, which is also the name of your book. Um, so tell us a little bit what we can find on the website, where we can purchase your book, all the good details. Great. So our book is available on all the online bookstores that you can find. There is a big one. I'm sure that all of you are very familiar <laughs> with. Um, but it's also available at a lot of independent bookstores. So if you have one in your area, I encourage you to, um, reach out to them and see if they happen to have it in stock. Um, our website offers a lot of freebies. We have some videos on there. We have, um, a blog that has a lot of good content about yoga and it's how it can be helpful throughout this kind of perinatal and then, um, journey of parenting. And we offer workshops ongoing as well as classes ongoing, both in person and online. So even if you're not in North Carolina, hopefully there's a way that you can attend a workshop or class with us. And then we also offer um, a Yoga Alliance certified 85-hour prenatal and postnatal yoga teacher training, which occurs um, fairly frequently, usually once or twice a year. Um, and we're trying to format it so that if Yoga Alliance will allow, we'll offer it both in person and one time and then online one time so that it can reach as broad of a swath yeah. as it can reach. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for being here today and just sharing all your knowledge and um, sharing this book with the world. Yes. Thank you so much, Amy. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Please do consider leaving a five-star review wherever it is that you're listening to help others on their wellness journey discover this podcast. And be sure to head to mnyogalife.com and join our email list to stay in the know of local events, the upcoming conference, and so much more. And thank you all for listening. I hope to see you in the next episode.